from going live to your live. Good deal. I'd like to see that. Chris, if you wouldn't mind, would you shut that door, maybe? So, good morning, everybody. Um, here live with you on uh, a special edition, Ask the Agronomist. Uh, we're, uh, we're live from the uh, St. Louis Grand uh, Marriott, downtown St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, special guest star, uh, Jeremy Taylor, sitting here with me. We'll uh, let Jeremy introduce himself in a minute. Uh, special guest producer, Chris Callal in the room, uh, manning the chat. So uh, remember to turn your volume down on that so that uh, we're not echoing. So so Chris will be joining you all in the chat here momentarily. So we're uh, we're a little disorganized here this morning. We're in a different location. we got different people. Um, you know, a couple of these guys were possibly out late last night. So um, we're uh, we're doing the best we can here this morning. And, uh, and there's only three of us. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, guy, the guys I had breakfast with this morning uh, noticed that there were very few people in the uh, exercise room this morning in the in the hotel. So I didn't even realize hotels had exercise rooms. So he learned something new every day. But uh, we're uh, um, as as you all know, our, our format here on Ask the Agronomist is we love to get your live questions coming in. Um, don't know how many questions we'll get today. This is going to be a little bit of a different day. Um, J Jeremy is, uh, is, is, a, uh, is a veg guy now, and I'll let him explain uh, that transition. And we'll be talking about uh, you know, his, uh, uh, what he does on the vegetable side of the business. Uh, he, he and I go back quite a ways back in his uh, uh, old days in the agronomy uh, or organization. And uh, his, his, his larger than life personality may not come through here on the small screen. Um, on uh, on Ask the Agronomist, but uh, uh, great dude, and uh, he, he goes by JT um, in certain circles. I go by LT, so uh, so we're both initials uh, initials guys. But anyway, JT, I'll let you introduce yourself to the audience and and give us your background, personal, professional, where you started, how you got here, where you're at, what you do. Just uh, take it away. Thank you, LT. You bet. Um, so I'll, I'll take it back. Uh, I, I grew up on um, a small, I would say, quarter horse ranch in, in southwest Missouri. My grandparents, uh, they had quarter horses. Cool. And uh, I guess I'll call it a ranch. I mean, they had, they had several quarter horses, and I knew I ended up uh, mucking a lot of stalls. Sure. And so um, I started there, and at 15 years old, I went to work with a small, I say small, it was one of the largest family-owned um commercial uh, processing companies, uh, vegetable companies in, in the U.S. It was Allen Canning Company. They're no longer uh, a company, but I went out there and I was a heavy machine operator. So driving big, big jack pixel combines uh, from when I got out of school until mm -hmm. about two days before school started back up. Mm. And uh, and so that's, uh, if you will, that's where I really started to dive into, okay, what is what is this, this bigger agriculture mm -hmm. that... That didn't exist on the on the little farm. And so, what crops did they deal in? Green beans, spinach, okay. um, greens. A lot of what I did was just around green beans. And mm -hmm. so, I did two seasons as an operator, and then I switched over to be a heavy heavy machine technician. Still going with the the traveling, you know, harvest crew and whatnot. And um, it was, uh, I mean, I still remember when when I interviewed for for Monsanto later on in life. If you'd have told me that I would reference a job that I started when I was 15, I would have said, you're crazy. Mm, right. But it all, the Lord had a plan and it tied yeah. it in. Mm. Um, so I did that. I worked for, for Alan Canning. I went from, from driving a combine to a heavy machine technician to a team lead to uh, doing quality control in our canning plants. And, um, and then I got really busy trying to... Uh, to finish up my, my graduate work and, and, and all that. And the rest became. So that was all, all through high school and college. All you're you're school working college. for them. Okay. Yep. Yep. Cool. It's, it's, That's uh, neat. I didn't know you had a, a vegetable background, you know, where you started. <laughs> yep. 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 And, uh, and so then I'm getting close to finishing graduate school. I doubled up on all my coursework and um, we all get in that spot where it's like, all right, are we going to find a job or are you going to go mm. and just do a PhD? Yeah. And I applied to this small, small company online and back in the day i feel like i'm old saying back in the day back in the day you would apply online and you would wonder if it went to a black hole well, back, back in my day there was no online so if that makes you feel any lt better. i really appreciate that <laughs> I, I feel younger already man <laughs> and uh and so uh i applied and uh two days later i i got a i got a reach out from the admin they wanted to fly me to st louis to do a, a seminar 
the next week mm. and uh, flew to flew to St. Louis, and uh, the rest truly became just history. Cool. And uh, I joined Monsanto in 2006 as a All research right. plant pathologist um, for our disease control team. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, that's neat. So, uh, so I I would have. Um, okay. All right. So, so pr producer Chris is. Thank you, producer Chris. Doing his job here, pro probably at the request of producer Jennifer, who's the <laughs> one that's uh, truly paying attention to what's going on. Uh, we, we've got a couple. You, you, you may be correct. A couple. Oh. <laughs> a couple FSRs um, on the team, uh, JT that. That, that help with uh, the broadcast. And so usually uh, Adam Henniger is, is our, is our probably our general frequent host, uh, producer host, but uh, Jennifer Elliott uh, is, uh, is very involved as well. And, and uh, Dan Shaw is filled in occasionally. So, so ask the agronomist has been a team effort. I didn't actually, I should have took my geeky name tag off, you know, I didn't. didn't LT, take, I didn't want to make fun Jennifer, of you. Jennifer, what are you doing? You didn't tell Chris to tell me to take my name tag off. See, see what they give the old guys here at AgTech. I've I've got a twenty plus years of service, red ribbon. So so you'll see Cal, Cal could could show you his. He's got oh he took all his ribbons off. I lost them. So 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 the glue, the adhesive they use on the ribbons is not very good. And Cal had like sixteen of them on there, and the weight of all those different ribbons it just wouldn't stick to it. So so there's uh, there's people around here that have won a lot of awards over the years. And, and the one award I've won is I've been here a long time. So uh, so I've got my one 20 plus year ribbon there. So is that a survivor award? I guess it is. Yeah. So so actually, truth be told, this is the closest uh, ask the agronomist I'm going to do to my anniversary. Uh, March March 8th here in, what is that, two weeks is 30 years for me. So so 30 years ago on March 8th, I started at Monmouth at the, at the research farm. I didn't know you started at Monmouth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, see, we're learning all kinds years, of stuff here. Yeah, so that that's cool. I'm I'm proud of that. That's uh, that's something that um, I, I love coming to these meetings, and we'll talk a little bit about why we're here and what ag tech is, is all about. Um, but one thing we usually do when we get together is they they give people you know recognition for years of service. So, uh oh, uh oh, somebody somebody didn't do a good job setting up the. Where do you have that, Chris? All right, Chris will help me out here. Yeah, we're jelly Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> we're kind of a train wreck this morning. So, so, <laughs> so, Jen, Jennifer's probably getting in her truck as we speak and gonna. Is that too high? Uh, I don't know. Jennifer, will, Jennifer will tell you. So, <clears throat> so um, you can use uh, use that for a prop if we need to. So, <clears throat> so anyway, so what, what? Since we're here in ag tech. Uh, ag tech is, I, I jokingly refer to it as it's, it's kind of like the master sale or not master sales, but it's kind of like the uh, annual sales meeting for, for agronomy nerds. And we've got our whole tech dev, tech dev and agronomy organization for North America. So the Canadians are here with us and, uh, we're going through updates on, you know, I've got my agenda here of, of all the breakout sessions we went through yesterday. So. Cal, what what did you set in on yesterday? We we talked about uh, heat and drought effects in corn. That one was kind of cool. Uh, there was a good update on fusarium crown rot from uh, Iowa State University. We had a tar spot update, we had a short corn systems update. Um, what else? We had uh, soybean breeding, seed treatments. Uh, had a had an interesting pivot bio presentation. Uh, John Deere was here uh, telling us about some of their new technologies and equipment. So. <clears throat> just to give you a little, <clears throat> that's our, that's our agenda for the week, both, both sides of that. So they keep us pretty busy here. And, uh, and then they usually have some, some, uh, festivities in the evening. There was, there was live karaoke last night. So I don't know if either you, you might be a karaoke guy. Well, <clears throat> I am a karaoke guy, but that was, I got to say, that was the first I ever experienced a live. Yeah. Karaoke. That was pretty intimidating. You know, you're, was... you're, you're front, you know, so if you've done karaoke before, you're usually in a bar looking at a screen. Um, you're front and a live band with the way they, these guys did karaoke. So, um, you know, I, I, and I, I can't sing a lick and you don't want to hear me. So I didn't, uh, I didn't do anything. <clears throat> yeah. So, but anyway, um, so here, here at ag tech, we, we get lots of updates on our technical projects. There's lots of personal development training. You can learn about different things. Uh, we've, we've got 
three three days, pretty pretty jam packed. There's a award ceremony tonight where we're going to recognize. So so our, our colleague Jim Donnelly um, got a got a big award this year for uh, for his work with Tar Spot, and uh, so so Jim will be recognized here tonight for that. So those of you who know Jim, give him a give him an attaboy for that. I got to ask, what was the reward? Uh, what he get like the. Is it, can't think what. Quiet. Yeah, I can't think what he's oh, one of them. He gets, he gets, or the, yeah, the, the yeah. development excellent work. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Very good. Very good. Yeah, Very yeah. Strong. So, so he, yeah, he did Very a strong. he developed a uh, a system of of just the right amount of rainfall through misters to create the right environment for tar spot and to actually be able to artificially infest and infect and and get uniform heavy tar spot pressure. That's right. Yes. So Cody Evans, which is a colleague of ours on the crop protection side of the business, uh, won won an award as well. So, so those uh, technical award excellence winners will be recognized here tonight, um, al along with other people that, that win awards in the in the organization. And, and that's and that's why people get these ribbons. So if you if you've won awards in the organization in the past, you get a you, you get a ribbon for that. Cal won that award years ago for his uh, wet feet uh, work in in corn. So. Uh, Chris is a past award winner of that as well. So, so it's a lot of fun to get. This is the first live ag, ag tech we've had in three years. We were joking about the the the, the last live ag tech was like the last one of the last meetings that Chris and I would have been at before everything got shut down for the pandemic. And uh, is 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 that is that the one where you were Elvis? Or was that or that was earlier than that? That was out in Lake Las Vegas. That was that back. was out in Las Vegas. <laughs> that's that's when we still traveled for ag tech. It used to move around the country. Now it's generally in, in St. Louis. The last two years have been virtual, which was awful uh, to endure a virtual ag tech. So uh, in person is, is much, much, much preferred. <clears throat> but um, so let's uh, let, let's talk about your transition from the agronomy organization, um, I guess, back to your roots in, in veg. And what do you do? I guess, tell us about it for, for our listeners that are generally as grew to Cal folks, maybe not even realize that we are a vegetable seed company as well. So tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So my role now is, is as I transition, and maybe I'll back up just a bit because I left off at of biotech. Right. So once I, I jumped into biotech, I was there for two and a half years doing the pathology work on, on disease control. And, and a fun fact, why I was there, I was working on this little project that, that would uh, eventually become um, extend fly, extend beans. Cool, cool. And uh, and so when we talk at field days, and you'd see everybody waiting because we had our we're gonna launch, and we're gonna wait. Yeah, that's remember right. That? Yeah, you know yeah. That? yeah we remember that. I always told them, I said, hey, if you feel you've been waiting a long time, yeah. I've been waiting like 13 years, yeah. you yeah. know, to, to see the product. But I was in biotech, and then I did make my my move after the acquisition of Semenes when Monsanto purchased mm -hmm. them. I went out and I, I was a TDR on the East Coast for three and a half years. And that's when I, I really had my first taste of of our company, our, mm. our seed division, uh, vegetable seed division. And um, it, it was great. I was one of the first that came from Monsanto to go into that business. And mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's very surreal now. So then I, I went back to Row Crops right. where uh, our paths started to connect. Mm -hmm. And I was the regional tech development lead for Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin running uh, the the td and the, and the um, area research manager teams um for for that and i did that for two and a half years and then i i, I got asked hey do you want to you want to go to minky mm -hmm. you know that name yeah i do i was i was kind of i was never yeah. happier than when we picked up ohio that you know minky was stopped yeah. i mean that was just <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah so so minky would be michigan, michigan indiana kentucky, kentucky right Right. Yeah, and, and Mons back in the old days, Monsanto and Bear, Bear's not much different, frankly. You got to have an acronym for for everything. So, so you turn things that don't need to be an acronym into an acronym, and, and sometimes they're embarrassing acronyms. Yeah, I mean, Jason Hogan and I worked really hard when we got in there, and uh, and it took us about eight years to get that done. But uh, <laughs> it was my longest stop in my career. But I tell you what, the the agronomy business, um, I learned so much. And the customers, the, the people, um, I, I had no idea how much it was preparing me for me to make a transition back to the veg business. And I knew, I knew there was one role, only one role that would that would pull me away from it because I, I know we're all biased in this room, but agronomy organization is pretty fantastic. 
And uh, lo and behold, that one role came. And cool. so here, here you find me today. So I'm the, the America's lead for market development for our, our vegetable seed division um, with uh, two brands that, that we represent as we go to market, which is Semenis, which is our open field. So all of our open field customers. And then we have De Reuter Seeds, which uh, is all of our protected culture, glass house, high tech, uh, high tech business. Hmm. And um, it's uh, there's a lot of parallels. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of parallels. But what I do, what I'm, what does MD do? It's not far from what what you boys right. are up to. Um, I have market development reps, which are analogous to, to agronomist. But um, they're in that same slot where you have new technology that's coming in, new products, and you're, you're the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to understand, my team's trying to understand, okay, what are the, the features, advantages, and benefits? What are those nuances that you can, you can really start to wrap your head around as early as possible in the pipeline so you can start the, tell, the storytelling process? And sound familiar? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then once it, it comes into, into play, um, you're trying to just put so much momentum behind it to get your sales team excited, you know, to mm -hmm. grab their sword and shield and climb the hill and and uh, really be there for the customer. So, so how does um, how does Seminus go to market? You know, when, when I was a kid, I I, I, I love gardening. I could uh, I could plan a hell of a garden. And, and, and as I said, plan, not, not plan. Yeah. And I could plant a hell of a garden too. keep taking care of it through the summer was a challenging thing for me. Uh, but I'd spend all winter actually when the when the when the Earl May catalogs and the Gurney's catalogs oh, and the Burpees and the all those cat I mean I would be ordering seeds out of all these different catalogs and my my mom would always get frustrated with me. She just pick one, just pick one. They've they've all got everything. I'm like, no, this <laughs> this one's got this special pumpkin that I want. And this one's got this wheat corn that I want. But but I never got a, a Seminus catalog. I noticed that. So how do we go to market in in the veg business? Yeah, no. So when you when you look at it, uh, it's not surprising you didn't get a Semenis catalog. But um, so we have we have four four strategic segments. We have um, we have our, our open field, we have processing, we have our protecticulture business, mm -hmm. and then we have our processing business. But then there's there's another one uh, that that you guys have probably heard of, but it's it's where we fall under our home garden business, okay. and that's where. Um, I won't drop their names, but you know mm -hmm. that's where you have different plant houses that are purchasing the seed, and mm -hmm. you can go to probably your local large box store mm -hmm. when it comes springtime, mm -hmm. and you can you can pick up plants that are that have been in the business or been around for probably when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah. You know those tried and true, yeah, beef type tomatoes and things yeah, like that. Yeah, and so that that falls under our, our home garden business. So yeah, yeah. I I, I mean some of that stuff. You talked about introducing new products, and, and that kind of made me think of this. You know, there's things in that business that have existed for a long time. You know, how often do new products come into that business? So we, we have some products in our lineup, um, especially when I look at my region. I, I look to South America. There's some products that have been in there 15 years, mm -hmm. 20 years. And, um, and and that's, you're like, you know, if you're, you're out in, in row crop land, you're like... Yes. Right, right, right. That yeah, long? yeah. I mean, really? we, we 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 make fun of some of our corn hybrids that are ten years old. Right, that that's you know crazy right. to have right. a ten year old corn hybrid. And, and I think I think to give some context to that in the, in the vegetable business, and this is what makes it exciting, it's not a commodity. And so as as we start to develop products, especially when you're looking at the fresh market, you are looking at so many different traits that isn't just yield. Mm -hmm. Yield's a big one, right? Because mm -hmm. it's the pocketbook. But you're looking for the sleekness of a pepper. Yeah. The shoulders are smooth. Is it the green color that you want? Mm -hmm. So that when the consumer sees it in that market, they're going to be like, oh, that pepper, yeah. right? Or the, the wholesaler is going to want to buy it from you so they can position it mm -hmm. in that market. And so it, it takes a lot of work to really identify those characteristics. Um, I'll tell you what, when I was a TDR, I did my first sweet corn trial. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> It was a PCM one and it was a PCM two, so you can you know how large mm -hmm. those trials were, mm -hmm. and one of the evaluation types was you know flavor, crunch, pericarp. You know you mm -hmm. bite into it, and mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna say, when you get through a hundred plots of that, mm -hmm. 
you forget how much sweet corn you really ate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it can catch up with you. You remember it later that day, I bet. Yeah. You, you remember yeah, it as yeah, you're, yeah. you're in the middle of like 100 <laughs> acres of nowhere. <laughs> and now, and now well, at, least, at least there's no witnesses. <laughs> no, no. You're just, you know, you're trying to, yeah, yeah. Anyways, you follow me. But, but, but I share the stories because, I mean, there's just so much. And, and I remember my sales guy then telling me, he's like, hey, I'm going to ruin you on sweet corn. Kid you not. Yeah. And when we got into the super sweets, yeah. um, biased obviously to, yeah. to some menace. Yeah. It was game changer. And I know you, yeah. you guys have probably had the yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, that stuff's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what, what's interesting is, you know, once those came onto the market, uh, you still have your roadside, right? So you have different yeah. different uh, value chains. And uh, you have your, your roadside, then you have your, your shippers and and it's funny all the roadside, you know, you, you go up there and you'd see them selling, you know, you just stop by to see, you know, what they got and and uh, people would come up and be like, "Is that Silver Queen?" Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely, Silver Queen. Mm -hmm. You're gonna enjoy it. And yeah, <laughs> was, you remember Silver Queen? I do. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It, it tastes like field corn compared to yep. You know, yep. some of the new stuff yep. and the you know the, the the tenderness of some of that and the yeah. you, know, you don't get stuff stuck in your teeth and the taste and right. and, it, and it is right. different. You know what? You know we're so focused on yield and and I guess if that really delicious here sweet corn is a little smaller, I'll just eat an extra one. It's not a problem, 100%. you know. Yep. So there, there's other things that go into that other than just, you know, but you, you know, you still got to have the plant health and you still got to be exactly. able to, to, to grow the stuff. Husk cover. I yeah. mean, and then and then you go, you know, so that's open field, right? You're looking at how's how's it look? Is it appealing once you peel the husk back? Disease traits, all mm -hmm. of that. And then you flip it over to, let's say you're going to go into the processing market. Now you get, you know, does the husk come off easily? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, you, you know, um, when you look at carrots, do you have the right length and diameter for a carrot so that they can make the appropriate cuts they need to maximize their their investment as the processor mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to get it to market? I mean, there's there's so many, and so those that level of detail takes time, mm -hmm. and it's no different than than what I would say we are in this room, and we've all done it. We're probably our biggest critic when it comes to products, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the cool thing I think that, that we've all experienced in our careers. Um, we, we cut out some things that, that I think are somebody behind us would love to have. Sure. If that makes sure, sense. Sure. And uh, so, so we still got some work to do. We got some work to do. And, and even, you know, from when I was there before to coming back, there's a lot to change and there's, there's some things that hasn't changed. So I, you know, I, I really only know Seminus through the performance series, sweet corn. There you go. Um, Good product. You know, you've, you, you alluded to performance series. Isn't just sweet corn. Um, and, and what, I mean, I guess, what crops are we in? What, what are our, you know, what's your top 10 list of crops that, that are big for salmon is? Yeah. So, so when I think about, uh, just, just in general, you have tomatoes, you have peppers, you have sweet corn. Um, and, and to give you perspective, as I, as I list these off, you know, we're in 22 crops mm -hmm. and we have over 2000 varieties. Mm -hmm. Skew management, that's, right? That's, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. perspective, right? Yeah, that's crazy. And so when you look at your tomatoes, your peppers, your sweet corn, um, you know, and you go on the onions, carrots, cucumbers, watermelon, um, broccoli, and the list goes on, mm -hmm. um, in that order, that that first five make up in, in North America, I'd say probably close to 70% of our business, you know? And so when I was here before, you know, I say we're at, we're at uh, oh, what was it, 22 crops? I think when I was here before, and and if some of the the the, the season folks from Semenis, they I think we were pushing like close to fifty, and and we all know that um, you know it's it's good because you can meet the needs of every type of customer wanting mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z, but you still get into the same thing that that all of us deal with in, in row crops, which is seed production. Right, and uh, and so that that was a, a a big thing I saw as I come back in the past six months is. We've gone from that to, to 22. You still have, you know, roughly 2,000 varieties that go across those crops, but it, it's it's a little more it's a little more focused. That's probably more than you wanted. No, no, it's, that's good, perfect. That's, Actually, Chris and I were just at our uh, Waterman Seed Quality Lab, which I learned yes. when we were there. They do all the testing for veg, too. So, yep. so they were talking about the different protocols that you have to. You know, we we get pretty engrossed in seed quality testing for corn and soybeans don't even give a thought to well, how do you do seed quality testing for leaf lettuce 
uh, yeah. or you know some crop that's that's vastly different, and they've got all these different protocols for for all the different uh, quality tests they do at uh, at that lab, and pretty yeah. uh, pretty pretty impressive. So that's uh, that, that's cool. So so the the performance series sweet corn, which which really, I mean, it, it saved the farmer sweet corn patch because before you had round and pretty sweet corn people had largely given up on trying to have uh, a patch of sweet corn because it kept getting killed when the rest of the cornfield got sprayed yeah. um so so having the ability to have traits and sweet corn was great for our our farmers and our dealers and you know a lot of farmers like to have their own sweet corn patch give sweet corn to the landlords um, that that development was was great when that came along. Are, are there are there traits in other veg crops as well? And I'm talking biotech traits or sweet corn about it when it comes to biotech stuff. Yeah. So what, what was interesting is when I left the, the veg business, if I can, LT, I never dreamed about how much I would talk about performance series sweet corn mm -hmm. with all our row crops customers in Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you would inevitably get there when you're planting a plot or whatnot with your team, and there would be the bag. Yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't help but say, "Hey, you know, that's a really good product." Oh, it is yeah. really. Yeah. <laughs> and then the rest, you know, the rest became history. But um, you know, it is, it is from from the perspective of focus on on what we do. That is, that is our predominant product that, that would have um, uh, the a transgenic trait mm -hmm. in it. Um, back in the day, we had uh, we had a product that was in squash, and uh, you know there's 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 plenty of products that are sitting on the shelf. Mm -hmm. But uh, for our focus as a company, mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's just it's on that performance series sweet corn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I would imagine that <clears throat> you know in in row crops, I mean we we've, we've had our share of challenges with the acceptance of biotech mm -hmm. traits um, from other countries, even people here in this country. And I, I would imagine that gets enhanced when you're talking about vegetable stuff. Hundred percent, hundred percent, because you know it's it's again it goes back to the to the value chain, and you know who the wholesalers they they want the solid product, mm -hmm. they want the quality, and with, with our super sweet business, you know they were like they started asking for those particular products, right? Well, whole, wholesalers may like it all all day long, mm -hmm. but unless they're going to find that retail buyer, then, you know, it's, it's, it's a loss. And so it's the same misnomers that we had years and years ago when we didn't tell our story as, as Monsanto mm -hmm. about what is this transgenic that you guys are up to? You remember that mm -hmm. we, we didn't do a great job mm -hmm. there. Right. And then we made the shift and mm -hmm. we started educating and let, and trying to own that narrative. And so that's, that's, what's been, uh, still a challenge for us, I would say, mm -hmm. just uh, mm -hmm. kind of the misinformation. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you an example. Social media, any platform is a great thing, right? Mm -hmm. My wife was pregnant with our daughter <clears throat> and um, and uh, I think I just switched over to, to the rail roll. And uh, she puts on my, my wife's Facebook um, a picture of an ear of sweet corn with a hand grenade clip at the top. And it was an article about how GMOs cause cancer and blah, blah, blah. And I'll, I, I'm, I love my wife. We just celebrated 20 years. She's been right. with me that long. Congratulations. I know. Um, and I was so proud of her because she was more disgusted and angry with my yeah. with, She's yeah. like, do you know what he does for a living? Yeah. Did you even read the article? And she's like, well, no, I just saw it, the headline, and I knew that you were, you were pregnant. And and, yeah. and so it's that misinformation yeah. that just continues. Yeah. And, and with veg, and this is something I talked about yesterday in the, in the vegetable session, um, it really starts with, with the dinner table. You know, the lay customer doesn't associate soybeans. They don't associate corn with the dinner table necessarily. Right, right. And so when you look at the scale of our business, like you, you, have, you have row crops mm -hmm. and then you have, you have veg. If that, if that, can you see that on the screen? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's, you know, without yeah. dropping numbers and stuff, that's, yeah. that's what you have. But this business down here from a sustainability and the initiative that Bayer has mm -hmm. of health for all, hunger for mm -hmm. none, mm -hmm. people relate to that small business really quick because right. it's sitting at the dinner table. Right. Right. It's, right. It, people. Well, well, we, you know, we in, in, in row crop agriculture, you know, we, we've got all these 
campaigns and we spend all this time, you know, trying to relate to the customer and talking about how we're involved in, in food production and, you know, and it's, it's not, it's not in my best interest as a, as a corn and soybean farmer to educate the consumer that I'm not really growing your food per se. Your customers are growing the food more than my customers are. Now, now we grow, you know, we use a lot of corn for feed. We process a lot of things. I mean, really, honestly, mostly what we grow is turned into animal feed that produces meat products that you eat. Yep. But, you know, I, there's a lot of consumers that don't realize that all the corn you drive by up and down the road is not sweet corn. Uh, and that is not uh, what they're going to eat. That's true. Uh, you know, um, as a matter of fact, I, I, I kidded, uh, um, I, I had a, um, a Chris Souter on as a, as a, a guest, nice. a little special I recorded. And, and uh, I know Cal all saw this video. I don't know if you did, but, but Chris got interviewed by some national media people about short corn oh, when he was in a short corn role. Yeah. And, and they got off on tangents around, you know, the environment and, and they started talking about sweet corn. And just going off down these bunny trails about sweet corn and um and not realizing that the corn he's going to talk to them about has nothing to do with sweet corn but it was just it was humorous <clears throat> but uh you know there's <clears throat> everybody in agriculture you know feels good about being involved in food production and we all are but not as intimately as as your customers are i would say well, that was my message yesterday at, at the end is, is, is it's not just that we're at the table, we're all at the table. So I think there's an educational process that that um, I would say in the back of my mind, I'm really passionate about and I want to see it materialize where there's more of a connection to um, that food chain to the, to the kitchen table that involves row crops. Mm -hmm. Because you're absolutely right. And here, here's... <laughs> For the record, if if, ever, if all the sweet or all the corn they drove by was sweet corn, it wouldn't be like this. Yeah, that's right. Like, <laughs> like yeah. how's the soybean business yeah, doing yeah, over there? Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> but but it, it's it's so true, and it's all perception, you know. And um, uh, one of the one I remember here we go back in the day. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need to pull my pipe out. <laughs> um, back in the day, back in the day when I was a TDR, I remember being at a vegetable conference down in, in Georgia. And we had just finished our, our first year of trialing with uh, with the sweet corn, uh, the, with the biotech trait. And we're sitting in there and has academics in there. And, and you know, we were talking about it and and what it really did to, to give context to all of you out in, out in uh, YouTube land know is that in, in conventional sweet corn, if, you know, once it starts to silk, if if the producer could get across that field every day to control worms, mm -hmm. They would. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they aren't. Mm -hmm. But if they could, mm -hmm. if, the, if the world would allow them. No. And when when the biotech trade came out, it took it to maybe one or two sprays. Mm -hmm. And and so even more perspective is that you can get a load rejected if the inspector finds just a couple worms, mm -hmm. a whole load, whole truck. Mm -hmm. And and um, and so we did the first year of data and we're sitting in this room and the academics finally had enough. And they said, well, in the grocery stores, why don't you put conventional and put a little sign on how, how much that's been, that's been sprayed <laughs> versus the biotech. And it's like, Oh, wait, yeah, wait a minute. Right. These conventional people are our customers. Too. That's right. That's right. Well, and, that, and we're in that business as well. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, there's just not an easy answer to it, but um, one that we're all passionate about because uh, safety matters to all of us. Right. We have families. Right. I mean, why would you put a corn on the table that, that you, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, I, I tell people all the time that, you know, if you, if, if you pick up an ear of sweet corn that is free of ear, da earworm damage, it's either got a trade in it or it was probably sprayed more times than you might be comfortable with. Now, there's no reason for you not to be comfortable with how many times it was sprayed because right. the products are safe and people use them appropriately and there's nothing wrong with spraying it a bunch of times. But there's a perception that there sure as heck is with, yeah. with some people. And um, and so you've got, you know, these lesser of evils choices. Do you do you want to share your meal with the earworm and, and pick them off as you're husking the ear back? Um, I, I do that, you know, when I've had sweet corn before and 
I just eat the part of the year that they didn't eat, and it didn't hurt me any. You know, there's probably certain go, go, there's man. there's probably some cultures where the earworm itself is a delicacy of some kind. That's I don't, tequila. I don't know. Is that what's in there? That's tequila. <laughs> so, so, so there's uh, all these um, you know the the, the consumer and, and whatever level of agriculture you're in, whether it's you know whether it's row crop agriculture, vegetable agriculture livestock production i mean we've all got our challenges with our consumers perceptions of what we do and i, I know um you know my, my wife and i have this debate a little bit i i actually like to be involved with educating the consumer about agriculture and showing and telling what i do on my farm my wife's very much the opposite she's a little more old old school of none of your business. This is, this is my, this is my private life here. What I do, I'm not doing anything wrong. You just trust me and stay away from me. Um, you know, and, and that's, you know, we're, we're trying to get people to embrace the, you know, we'll probably be in a better spot if we're transparent and share with people what we do, because in, in the, in the absence of information, their perception of what we're doing is probably far worse than what we really do. hundred percent. I mean, and it goes back to the comment I made about us all kind of living through the we let somebody else on the narrative early. Mm -hmm. And so we started playing catch up and I, I think you're, you're spot on. And, and it, it's, I mean, there's so many examples. I, I love, I love your wife's stance on it. I mean, I remember a, a farmer telling me, you know, that he had, uh, he had some, some ladies knock on, the, on his door and, and said, you know, would you stop planting that corn because it's killing all the grass around the crop? <laughs> <laughs> and then the farmer's just like, <laughs> what um you know or uh yeah. i mean it, and we, we all have the stories i mean um or one 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 farmer went in the cafe and he, he was telling me he was he was going to leave pick up his mail head back to the field and and a retired extension aide had said hey you know before you go spraying all that all that stuff out there think of the people you're hurting mm. and he and he went to the door and he stopped and he goes you know what I got 15 minutes. <laughs> he sat down and he did the calculation of how much we spray per acre uh -huh. and uh, <laughs> relative to a home gardener. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, um, and it, it's just, it is that perception. And the last example I would say is uh, I was fortunate enough when I came to Monsanto, I went to a, a meeting in Italy, the international Congress of plant pathology. And I got in the only biotech session that they were hosting. And, um, there was only a couple people that knew that I was from industry and I thought, Oh man, this is going to be a hot one, especially if one of them leak out that, you know, <laughs> right. Yeah. And this <laughs> Monsanto mole in the room. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's going to get dicey boys. Where's my exit. Right? And uh, it was, it was one of the most profound talks because the guy, I mean, talk about a cliffhanger, this Polish doctor gets up there and he goes, he, he leads in with, you know, why would we want to be able to provide for our families with ease. Why would we want to be able to produce more without having to add additional chemistries? Why would we this? Why would we that? And he's like, if we don't have biotech traits, there's no way we're going to sustain a population going forward. And he was talking smallholder farms. Mm -hmm. I was just sitting back. It's like, boy, that went a direction I didn't think it was going to go, but we're going to take it. Yeah. We're going yeah. to take it. Yeah. And, um, and and so I know it's a lot of stories, but it, it's all perception that we've all encountered right. at some point. And I'm I'm the guy that would would love the phone, the, the conversation on the airplane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we would we would wear the garb, and you yeah. know, you'd have that conversation yeah. because if if we don't, who's going to have that right. conversation? Right. Yeah. No, that's true. So great. Uh, I, I, I love the stories. So don't, uh, don't, don't hold back on the stories. I'm going to set my pipe down. That's all right. <laughs> professor, uh, professor Taylor has uh, finished his dissertation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm guessing Chris, we probably haven't had any, que any questions coming on the chat. So hopefully you enjoy the conversation. I know this is a little bit different for us. So we, we, uh, I was thinking about, uh, you know, there are some things going on in the in, in the agronomy world. We had an inch and a half of rain yesterday at home, which is pretty uncommon for the 22nd of February. Um, so for, for those who have been nervous about the soil moisture getting replenished, we have had you know some good rainfall. 
Uh, it's going to keep uh, pro probably prevent any February soybeans from going in the ground in Calaw's territory. I know every, every time it gets a little dry, he's got somebody that's ready to hook onto a planter and uh, and and go do something. So we uh, some yeah we 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 do like to push the envelope. And, uh, and is it I, still true that early corn is the best corn? <clears throat> I, I I I would I would say that the perception that you need to be early still exists, but uh, the, the the data continues to mount that uh, there's not really that much of an advantage to uh, planting it early other than you're getting it done. Early beans are kind of more the cool thing these days. So we uh, we, we protect people from making a mistake on corn by encouraging them to go plant their beans when it's not fit to plant. So uh, yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's the trade off. The trade off. Southern make. white meat. That's right. That's right. So, uh, so there is a there is potentially something to be gained by uh, pushing the envelope on your soybean. So that's kind of all the all the rage in uh, in Illinois these days. So, so anything else, uh, JT, that you would like to share about your your business or your role or um, you know what what's next for you? I mean, I'm I'm in my you know you were going through every you know about every two years you you changed roles there, and and that's how you can tell the difference between you know, somebody with potential and, and somebody who's just, you know, hoping people don't realize that he's not really that valuable and just kind of hanging out here in a role. I, uh, I've been an agronomist for 13 years, I, I think, in, in this actual, with the same title. I mean, I've been an agronomist for 30 years, but 13 years as a technical agronomist in, in basically the same territory. And, and if I could do this another 10 years and retire with a 40-year with a career, that, that's my idea of, of perfect. Um, are, are you in your, you know, sp spend the rest of my career role or what, what's next for, for you? Well, if you do the 40 years, congratulations. Congratulations on 30 because I know everybody knows your legacy and what you've done for agriculture. So, um, so you should be proud of that. I, I, I am. Are. And thank I you. you I appreciate that. Um, you know, for me, the raw the regional agronomy role, like I said, it, it slowed me down um, because to your point, it was two and a half, three, three years, you know, you'd, you'd go into the next role. And, and, and like I, like I said earlier, the regional agronomy lead role was just, it was, it was so great. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, it's one of the best roles in, in our company. And, um, and it slowed me down. I mean, I was eight years within in the business and, um, and so I, I think it changed me. So as I go to, to the role I'm in now as the market development lead for the Americas, um, I'm just looking to, to you know, live the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to um, take everything that, uh, that I learned with you guys over the, the course of 10 plus years and uh, see where those, those, those connection points are. And the one thing I keep in the back of my mind is, is I, I never want to go somewhere where I get removed from the customer. Mm -hmm. Because that, uh, that to me, as we all know, that's, that's, that's where it starts, it begins, and uh, someday it'll end for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll yeah. hang our boots up, right? Right, right, right. Uh, well, and, and you're, you know, you've got a very, I mean, we've all got a diverse customer group, but I mean, yours is more diverse, I would say, than ours is, because, you know, in, in row crops, we've got, you know, our, our, our dealers, our, our customers in some ways, and then the yeah. farmer is our customer. Um, you know, Chris and I primarily focus on people that raise two crops, corn, corn and soybeans. Yeah. Uh, those are the two seed crops that we sell here, you know, in, in our market. And, um, you know, you've got the home gardener, the truck farmer, the processor, the, you know, I didn't even think about the... Uh, in cult. So, so what are those, uh, is it Reuters that you, that you So, so the, what do you call that business? The in inside protected, protected. protected. So, protected. so what, 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 uh, is what kind of crops are, are being raised in that? Or is it flowers is it horticulture stuff? Is it veg? Um, yeah. what, what is that? So for, for our interest, right. It, it's, it's veg. Yeah. And, um, for that business, there's like a, would be lying to you if I could list off. There's 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 a small segment of products that, that are protected culture. We're known for in De Reuter for our rootstocks. Okay. And you know, that's essentially putting the engine under a plant and you know, put your top on it and then go to town, right? Hmm. Um, peppers and tomatoes are, are a big thing. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, when you talk about your dealers, depending on what the business you're in, if it's, if it's the Reuter or it's the Menace, on the East Coast, we have direct, we can go direct. Mm-hmm. We have dealers. Mm-hmm. You go to the West Coast, and it's predominantly all dealers. It is all dealers, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's a dynamic from an MD perspective that you're, you're just, you're having to balance um, being the partner to educate, being the partner to be the partner with the customer, right? Mm-hmm. And make them successful. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, but, but the protective culture business is, is very interesting. Um, because when you think about uh, the amount of investment that goes in the glass house, oh. high tech houses, yeah. and then there's there's a precision element that um, that that Semenis has worked on to to really optimize growing conditions for for customers. Um, it, it's it just it continues to grow. Now you go over to the Netherlands, you're going to see a lot of flowers and stuff mm-hmm. and, and greenhouses, but you're still going to you're going to get the, the veggies. And uh, you know a component we didn't talk about that. Um, uh, is is the vertical farming, you know, today, and uh, and that's that's something to be determined because um, the large box stores of the world they're wanting to see if if vertical farming close to their distribution centers can happen, right? So you're building up, you're not building out, so you're lowering that footprint because we're all in the quest of making sure that we're sustainable as possible, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so it's um it, it's a it's a fantastic business. I got to learn more. What's breeding like in the veg business? How, how does that compare versus you know, row crop corn and beef? Yeah, so so that's that's one of the things is as I mentioned, you know, what had stayed the same and what had changed, right? When I when I first went over to our vegetable business, we relied on one breeder, one single breeder, breeding assistants, and then they would partner for, for all the crops. For all the crops. Wow. Well, no, breeder per crop. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's back up. That'd that's be terrible. Well, that's still <laughs> that'd be terrible. That, that's still pretty insane. That's why we yeah. have products that have been in there a hundred years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that guy's really tired. Appreciate the clarification there, Um and, and so that breeder and their assistant, they would go to town, and they would, much like our, our breeders, you'd have your you know your PCM one, PCM two, mm-hmm. etc. When I came back, they've they've really gone through a transformation now where. When you have that one breeder system, you're putting a lot of intellectual property and eggs in one basket. Mm-hmm. And not to be morbid, but if the breeder happens mm-hmm. to get hit mm-hmm. by a bus, mm-hmm. where is where is that? Or, that? or more likely hired away by somebody. Fair enough. Yeah. A little too soon, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but exactly, exactly. And so what they have done is is I would say they've 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 really kind of modeled what you guys have done at row crops. So now you have uh, breeding teams mm-hmm. that are working. So uh, a line development breeder, a commercial breeder. And we're in that, that transitional phase right now of really bringing that process to life. And on my side of the business, TD is really sitting now in the testing organization. Uh, and they're, they're my team's partners from an MDR perspective that are working on the early development with, with the breeders. Until it gets to MD, so it's we got a long ways to go. I know one of my one of my guys was here presenting um, yesterday, and he said in one of the, I think one of the breeding talks, and I think they had, they had said something like seven million plots. And I think uh, perspective uh, for for North America, I think we may be at like one hundred twenty thousand. You know, so so we have a long way to go, but the analytics are really cool. But here's the thing. <laughs> I live and die by the 80-20. 80%, hell yeah, let's put it on analytics. Let's do all the, the modeling we can. But there's still going to be that 20% that I call the artistry of agronomy. Mm-hmm. That is where, is this is this pepper really doing what we think it needs to do mm-hmm. to be efficacious for our customer? Mm-hmm. And I believe with all of my being sitting here, LT, that that 20% has to be there because if we ever go to a model where we feel it's 100, right. I'll be nervous, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. I hope that that well, answers a little yeah, bit of. Yeah. yeah. No, we, we had a great, um, we had a two-hour update from from breeding and a North America field testing organization. It was just yesterday, I guess, mm-hmm. wasn't it, Chris? Um, I could have spent the whole day uh, talking to those folks about about what we're doing in in that space, but you know, they they spent quite a bit of time, even in row crops, saying that you know we're not trying to replace 
the old way with the new. We're trying to improve the old way with mm -hmm. the new by adding it to it. Yep. Um, now, a lot of our expansion has been into the new, right. so we haven't necessarily expanded, you know, the old way of doing things, but we're not doing away with it either. Yep. And, it, and your, you know, your market is, is so different because of the, you mentioned some of the, you know, the, the, the shininess, the shape, the color, you know, all those things that, yeah, I mean, our customers, they, they like high test weight corn. That's a pretty, mm -hmm. you know, dark orange color. Um, but that's generally not the reason they're selecting the product right. It's kind of a, well, it's nice to have, but it's not gonna, it's not a make or break thing, right. but you know, if that if that pepper doesn't have the right sheen on the skin and doesn't look good sitting on the shelf in the grocery store, you know, it, that's not going to work. Doesn't have the right amount of lobes. I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and what's the shelf? What's the holding capacity? Right. I mean, there, there's so many different things that play into mm -hmm. what those those breeders are trying to do, um, you know, and, and I'm. Demand generation. Have you, you you've all heard demand generation, right? And, and since I've been back in veg, I mean. They, they focus a lot on the, on, on the demand generation piece. And for me, um, in the past six, seven months, I've really brought me, my center back to, it, it's not necessarily demand generation, but I'm leaning more to, it's an umbrella of sales enablement is where you find MD. Because demand generation cannot just be MD, MD, right? Mm -hmm. It is MD, it is marketing, right. it is sales collectively coming together to make sure that we can, we can truly be enabled to create an experience. We call it sales enablement, but it's, it's creating that experience. So as we all know, you build lasting partnerships that people want to, they want to buy from, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's a, it's a unique. In, in sweet corn production, other than insects, what's the other major challenge that your grower customers would have? Um, same diseases that you guys are, are looking at, you know, so it's, 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 it's pretty close in agronomics from, from that respect. Um, insects are the biggest, right? And obviously your ear quality, yeah. you know, you yeah. can't blend it, <laughs> yeah. right? Right, you can't, you can't blend it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that, that's, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's, that's where you'd find it. But I mean, you know, for us and, and your growers are the same, you know, you have a product that can hopefully last seven, maybe 10 years. There's intellectual property that our farmers take on with our seed. And I would say in the vegetable business, it becomes more so because they're not going to a commodity. So they'll talk to their neighbors, mm -hmm. but they're going to leave out key details of how they get that paper, that pepper to, you know, kind of, you know, fill out more or that tomato to really hit a solid crown on the bottom. And, you know, it's just, it's all those details um, because that's their intellectual property mm -hmm. and they'll hold mm -hmm. on to it. I mean, we've had products in, in row crops where it was almost like a, a family member. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so you go to veg and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, fancy names, right? Mm -hmm. you know, passion, devotion, right. You know, those are, those, those are family members, mm -hmm. What you don't, you know, so it's, yeah. it's interesting, but it's, it's a lot of work. So you, you've referred to the Americas. So I'm, I'm going to ask a stupid geography question. Yep. I'm guessing that's South, Central, North, mm -hmm. all that. All so that's a. That's a lot of the globe there, man. Do a lot you, of the globe. Now, I, I know we don't travel like we used to pre-pandemic. We learned that you don't have to physically be everywhere, but I imagine you still must do a lot of traveling in, in the role. So TBD. So yeah, <laughs> uh, there, there was about, uh, I had a couple couple back-to-back uh, -back stints in, in the fall going to Mexico. Um, right now I'm just, I'm trying to get out and I'll be a stronger leader if I can see the markets, you know, we can experience. And uh and so I, I, but I also want to make sure I'm balanced with my family, right? Work life mm -hmm. balance. And, mm -hmm. and so we'll see Lance on, on what that travel looks like. Um, I, I just got back the night before from, from Yuma, Arizona. I was out there looking mm -hmm. at, at spinach and went to a spinach field day and some iceberg lettuce. And, and, um, you know, I didn't do this when I was, was in row crops, but as I left, I changed my Twitter handle to, uh, veg or JT's veggie tales. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no trademark on yeah, that, because yeah. you know? <laughs> it's JT's Veggie Tales. But um, I'm trying to to really embrace, like I said, that the educational piece. And so when I was out in Yuma, I did a post. And I got a couple more I got to do, where you know I really showed 
here's here's a spinach harvester for fresh market mm -hmm. you know and and when you look at the, the the spinach that goes in on the shelf i mean they're harvesting it right off the bed and it's that tall it's that, it's that tall mm -hmm. right and they have a stainless steel blade that looks like a bandsaw that's on the front of it and uh you know i'm gonna stop there if anybody wants to go out and mm -hmm. they can they can see uh they can follow me on jt's veggie tales but I'm, I'm just trying to so so maybe you, maybe you can maybe you can answer a question that i've always had and i i just i just wondered good room joe <laughs> <laughs> <How's it going? laughs> I, I just wondered who the first person in history was to ever cook spinach and go damn that's better you know, I, fr fresh, fr fresh, fr fresh spinach to me is, uh, I didn't know there was such a thing as fresh spinach. Because when, when I was a kid, the only place I had spinach was at school. You were forced to eat cooked spinach. And I, I can't, I can't keep that stuff down. But then I realized as, as an adult, um, you know, spinach is just, it's kind of like lettuce. You know, you eat it leafy and green, it's pretty good. Acquired taste. Yeah. And I just, I just, it's always, I've always wondered, you know, who the first person was that did that and thought that they were on to something good. So I, 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 um, I, I forget her name. Do we remember who Popeye's wife was? Olive oil. Olive oil. So I, I think maybe they tried it. Maybe she it was, was prepping it. Could be. You know, before it went in the can, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put my pipe back down. <laughs> There's probably some people out there who's Popeye. Yeah, that's who's right. olive oil. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right? Boy, we'll start chiseling our. our, uh, our yeah. um, I remember growing up, my mom put a, a bowl of of fresh spinach in front of me, and she she put fresh bacon bits in there, and uh, it's. Any of the spinach breeders or people that are they're gonna be like, are you kidding me, Taylor? This is what you wrote. I was a young man at the time. <laughs> and my mom, she was always about, you know, if I put it in front of you, you're yeah. going to eat yeah. it. Yeah. And so I gambled and I went ahead and I ate all the bacon out of it. Rookie move. <laughs> because I should have been like stabbing yeah. the bacon, That's stabbing it. lots of the yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. So I had that. I had that probably forty-five minute debate with that bowl of spinach. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bacon was excellent. Yeah. Spinach again, young man. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I feel you. I, yeah. You know, well, like I say, I've 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 learned to, you know, it's an acquired taste, and and uh, to me, the the leafy green spinach is not that hard to acquire to taste too. But when I was a kid in school, and we had to eat the cooked stuff, um, there was one kid in our class that loved it. And 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 he was kind of a character. Uh, he's in prison now, by the way. Um, but, hey, if but, you're watching. But, <laughs> but, but anyway, if if we can, I, I won't I won't call out his name, but anybody who went to school with me knows who I'm talking about. Uh, <clears throat> we would all sneak our spinach down to him, and, and he'd eat it. Either that, or you'd stuff it in a milk carton because you couldn't leave until the spinach was gone. But you sure as heck weren't going to eat the stuff. And so you had to figure out how to how to get rid of that, but that cooked spinach that made quite an impression on me. Yeah. So anyway, we're uh, we're nearing the end here. Uh, JT, thanks God for for that, and uh, I, I sure appreciate him uh, setting in here with us at AgTech. We're we're all going to be joining uh, AgTech in progress. We're showing up a half an hour late here this morning, so we could do Ask the Agronomist. But uh, thanks for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the. Uh... Yes, you're going to make a point. Yeah, so two two things to add. So uh, next. Uh, episode will be on March 9th. Okay. Um, so that'll two, be the two weeks episode. from today. And, and the uh, next thing I thought I'd call it is somebody celebrates a birthday tomorrow. Oh, and, they do. Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. So, so yep. they, they would be Lance. Yeah, that would be me. Lance has yeah. A birthday tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, so I, uh, I will be uh, 53 tomorrow. So uh, I, I started with Monsanto as a relatively young man right out, right out of graduate school. Um, not as young as Chris did. Chris, 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 Chris for, for the interesting factoid about Chris, Chris is several years younger than me, but he's not far behind me on his tenure at, at Monsanto. Now, Bear, because he started when he was, what, 15? 15. Working summers at the Jerseyville Research Farm. And uh, and so so Chris has been around almost as long as me, even though he's a hell of a lot younger than I am. So anyway, yes, tomorrow's my birthday. Thanks, everybody. And uh, thanks for joining us here on Ask the Agronomist. We'll be back with you in two weeks on, as Chris said, March 9th. And uh, be ready for your questions. Thank you. Thanks, Lance. You bet. Thank you, Jeremy.